Right, and I um, I have, there's a copy of that I can pull up when we're ready. Okay. Well, I'm looking at one too, so. Um... But it's a new hearing, so we'll. Um... Yeah, I don't have that language that I'm supposed to read. Oh, here I have it, the preamble. Yeah, I wasn't planning on doing this today, so. Okay, you want me to open the meeting? Yeah, let me just, um, I'll, I'm going to promote uh, Mark, you and Tom to panelists so you can speak after the preamble. Mark, you're, and Tom, there you go. So, all right. We have, we have three attendees and, um, all right, I think you're all set. Uh, Jan, if you want to start. Okay, so opening historical commission meeting at, what is it, 405? You've taken over my screen, so I can't tell. Um, okay. Yeah, 405. And we'll begin with the public hearing before we go to the regular meeting agenda, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so um, let me do the preamble before we start the public hearing. Uh, in accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 40A and Article 13, Demolition Delay of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. The Emerson Historical Commission is holding this public hearing to provide an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding the following demolition application request, 205 South Pleasant Street, 14A194, or Amherst College, request to demolish a circa 1862 single family home with Greek revival style and front gable end. Um, Massachusetts Historical Society, Form B, Inventory, AMH.350. Um, everyone has a copy. Nate, do you want to put up the copy of the, the request, the demolition request? Sure, let's do that. We just scroll you, through the. You um, need to verify our, our presence with the Zoom meeting. Uh, well, I was thinking I would do that at the regular meeting, but I can okay. do that now. Should we do a roll call? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's see. Everyone's here except Jane, right? So oh, two Janes. Two Janes. That's right. Um, so Jane A and Jane B. <laughs> <laughs> Jane Shuffler and Jane Walt are missing. Um, so we have Pat Alf. I, do, I don't because you're <laughs> present. I'm telling you, you're present. <laughs> um, <laughs> Robin Fordham. Present. <laughs> startup and then um, guests and Jan Marquardt acting as chair today. Um, so back to the public meeting. Um, first, we'll start with anything that um, members of Amherst College who are here want to say. Is that Carly? Is that so I think that's Tom and Mark. Oh, are they here? Okay. They, they are, yes. Yep. Okay, so anything you want to tell us about this particular building, Tom and Mark? Here's the application. Um, it's a little history right here. Do you have them muted? Oh, um, you can unmute yourself, Tom or Mark. Mark sure. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, go, go ahead. Just Tom, did you want to start or? No, go ahead, Mark. Go ahead. Uh, I'm happy to. So, um, 205 South Pleasant Street is the building um, directly to the south of uh, 197, uh, where we were before, uh, near the barn. Um, uh, near as we can tell regarding the existing structure, um, it, it doesn't have, uh, really nothing popped up. Uh, obviously, it's an, it's an older building. Um, the architectural style is all on the application form. It's around 150 years old. I forget the exact number. Um, um, and it's really right next to the existing property line. And uh, where we are in the project uh, is that we're, we're still in the concept design um, and we're moving back and forth in the concept design as these things often do. Um, and what became pretty clear to us uh, a little while ago is that the design of the building is going to interfere with the location of the house um, in pretty definite terms. <clears throat> So that's when we filed the demolition permit with you. Um, and that's why you're sort of seeing these demolition permits trickle in a little bit as we sort of uh, become convinced that that's necessary. That's when we approach you about it. 
Um, I can say that the, uh, the college is looking at um, alternatives to, to demolition. Um, I gave a tour to a gentleman who would like to remain anonymous um, last week. Um, and he was very positive. Um, it, it was probably, I, I don't know if I'm exaggerating too much to say it's a, a rough verbal agreement um, to move the structure. Um, but that was definitely where he was headed and he was very positive about the desire to do it and the ability to do it. Um, it was relatively straightforward. Um, for now, he'd like to remain anonymous because he's sort of working through his own issues that have, um, I couldn't speak to uh, if, if I wanted to, I don't fully understand them. Um, but I thought that that sort of, uh, that motion, that, that uh, desire and possibility to move the house was worth talking about, or at least informing you of. Great. Okay. Tom, do you have anything to say? No. Okay, any other comments then before we discuss? Um, I just have one question. Have you advertised for the house to be moved or Disassembled? No. no. So this was something no. that came word of mouth, um, whatever. Um, it's, um, yes, uh, word of mouth, I guess, is a good way to describe it. Okay. But through, Mr. through, through uh, internal channels. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I'm sorry, I, I was going to add one thing, um, uh, but I, I hadn't unmuted myself. So that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's that's why uh, it sounded like I was like, no, nah, I got nothing else to add. Um, I was a bit surprised, I must say. <laughs> right. Come on, I've got a, a, a platform. I have to speak. Um, so uh, we are very hopeful that, that this house is going to be able to get relocated. Um, it was a, a kind of a tough revelation to realize that it, it really couldn't stay um in its in its current location um and uh you know we kind of went back and forth for a while which is part of the reason that this that it wasn't all done at the same time um and um our understanding though is that um the the application from a permitting perspective is uh it kind of goes through the same route regardless so we're still here saying demolition um, permit, um, even if it turns out to be a relocation. Uh, I believe that's correct. That's what, that's what we've been informed of. And you're not actually selling it. You're just trying to find somebody to take it, right? A dollar. Okay. Um, okay, any other information? Um, Nate, that you need to give us, or anybody else have any other comments before we discuss? You know, the, um, you know, there's the inventory form that was sent along. Um, you know, there really isn't much in terms of the history of the house. I did send a picture from the, you know, um, late, uh, late 1880s or 1890s. So it's been a part of the streetscape for a while. Um, you know, as the form says, it's, a, you know, a front gabled side hall that, you know, there's, there's some nice detail and there's some along South Pleasant and other areas of town, but in terms of ownership or um, anything else, there really isn't, you know, could, I didn't find anything that would stand out. So, you know, there's some ownership mentioned here, um, you know, Henry, Henry Abbott and then was sold to, um, to the person who probably built the house. So there isn't, but in terms of someone living there that was prominent, I didn't find anything. Yep. Okay. Uh, commission members, any other questions? No. No. Okay. Well, um, I can close the public hearing and we can start our deliberations about the... Um, uh, I, well, we, got, we need a motion for that, but before we do that, there is some members of the public here. I don't know if, if oh. they have any comments. Right. Um, you, I don't know if we can see, I can see them. If anyone... Uh, has comments, you can raise your hand and uh, Zoom. You know, there's a little hover over your name and then you can hit raise your hand. 
I'm not sure that anyone looks like they are. How many people do we have tonight? Uh, there are six attendees. Okay, so I can't see them, is that right? Right, I can see them. Um, okay. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't look like Jane's joined us. Let me check my email one more time. Jane. Um, so we have six additional members of the public? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure there's any anyone raising their hand for comments right now. Okay. Once I um, take a motion to close the public meeting and we move to deliberation of the significance of the structure, then that's the end for comments. So anyone in the public um, or you from Amherst College, this is kind of your last chance. Okay, so members of the public, if you have questions or comments, you could um, you can speak now. I'm not okay, sure. so okay. I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Okay, all in favor from the Historical Commission? Uh, we have to have a roll call just to make sure for this. Oh, again. Okay. Okay. Uh, Pat? Present. No, you have to say yes, or, uh, yes, no, or it's. Oh, I'm yes. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm spacing. Yes. <laughs> okay. Robin? Uh, yes. Patty? Yes. And I say yes. Okay. So um, we'll move to our uh, standards for designation as a significant structure, section 13.4. Um, yeah, they should be up on the screen just to- Yeah, there we go. Okay, and I think I have to read this even though we can all see it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> the Historical Commission shall determine that a structure be designated as a significant structure if it meets one or more of the following criteria. Uh, 13.40 is listed on or is within an area listed on the National Register of Historic Places or is the subject of a pending application for listing on said National Register. Um, is it? <laughs> I don't think so. No, it's list, you know, it's been inventory, but it's not in a National Register. Right, so it's not that close to, okay. Uh, 13.41, the commission determines the structure meets one or more of the following three criteria. And here's where we go through uh, historical, architectural, and geographic importance. So we start with um, 41.0 or 4, 0.410, historical importance. Uh, the structure meets the criteria of historical importance if it has character, interest, or value as part of the development, heritage, or cultural characteristics as a town of Amherst, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, or the nation. Can we, can we group these together so that we do um, historical importance and consider all of the criteria for that and then the same with architectural importance and the same with geographic importance? Is that yeah, possible? I, I think we did that last time. Right, we, but I think we discussed each, each uh, criteria and then there was a vote on historic at the end. So okay. I think yeah. we need to go down and discuss each one. Okay. Yeah, I believe we're supposed to do them item by item, but if you want to group the discussion, you know, at the end we can, but I guess I need a yes or no, or maybe on each one as we go. Um, I'll go first, yes on uh, zero. Uh, well, let's just do that one. Just that. Cultural. I'm, I'm arguing for cultural on zero, zero. Okay, cultural characteristics of the town? Yes. Okay. I think it doesn't. I say no. Okay. Patty, any feeling one way or the other? I'd go with cultural. So yes. Okay. Um, I'm leaning that direction. Um, although there may be things that fit better, but at the moment, let's leave that as when we're possibly leaning towards. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, next one is the site of an historic event, as far as we know. No. no. Okay. Is identified with a person or group of persons who had some influence on society. No. Yeah. Always such a funny one. Or 
exemplifies the cultural, political, economic, social, or historic heritage of the community. I think it might be possible to argue something around um, economic heritage in terms of maybe the tenancies that were existing in the documentation about the house, but without much more information that would be rich and interesting, you can't really do very much with that. Um, it, it's, yeah. <laughs> so. Well, it's sort of a middling size, middling level structure in terms of economic mm -hmm. housing right yep. that way too so yeah how do we define social heritage i think that would be if something significant happened there okay. right? i imagine i mean if it were like the housing for a group of specific workers or if okay. a huge rally occurred in it or you know right whatever. Um, so, any feeling one way or the other on this one? Yes, no, maybe? Uh, no-ish. Yeah, I would say, say maybe. Say no. Okay, so for historical importance, where do we stand? You know, if it meets one or more, one or more of this, these uh, four criteria, then it would have cultural, um, or historical significance, so important. So, you know, typically the commission would vote to say, you know, does or doesn't it have historical importance? And um, <laughs> I'm usually the one who talks a lot, and since I'm running the meeting, I'm leaving it up to you all. So <laughs> it's hard because I can't see the other characteristics, which helps me kind of figure out where. I mean, I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking more. So, all right. Oh, now you've gone too high. Keep going down. Is that good? Uh, a little bit more. A little bit more. Down more? Down. Yeah. yeah. And stop. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, there that's we go. Perfect. Okay. Sure. Okay. I can't uh, see what you see, so that's... Mm -hmm. I think that what I'm thinking of when I said yes for the first one, for 1314100, it's more... 134110. It's more, it seems more related to the architectural importance as a particular style in a, in a particular time period. So I would, I would lean away from historical importance. Yeah, I mean, to the, um, you know, here's the, um, you know, historical significance on the, um, well, here's the architectural description on the inventory form and then the historical doesn't have too much uh, for, with it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so I was... <laughs> Oh, nice little distraction. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go for a, I'm going to go for a no. Okay. Does everybody concur with that and we'll move on to architectural and we can always go back if you change your mind, but at the moment, I, yeah, I'd like I, to change my mind. I agree with a no. Okay, so yes. let's currently say no for historical importance, which means that all four of those get a no. Mm -hmm. Okay, Correct. and moving on to architectural importance, the structure meets the criteria of architectural importance if it first one portrays the environment of a group of people in an era of history characterized by a distinctive architectural style. I'm leaning yes. Yeah, it's oddly worded. But yeah. It simply means that, you know, did the people of Amherst during a particular period live in this type of house? I think is what it's, you know, is this a style that was characteristic of a time period in Amherst? I would say so. I don't think the style is particularly characteristic. I think it's utilitarian for the time. That's, well, I think the utilitarian of the time is what's is what's right. Right. characterizing. You know it's, what I mean? Okay. Yeah. That the people it's sort of are, a bit typical of right. those that time for a house that people would build and live in. Right. I guess is what I'm thinking. Even if she built it as a lodging house. But, but typical is not the same as distinctive. 
No. Um, oh, I, I guess, guess what I'm saying is this. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, right. It's typical. It was not distinctive. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a really funny anecdote when I was on the Frank Lloyd Wright Building Conservancy for a long time. It was a national advocacy organization. And at one point I was having a very very low key or conversation with people about the house that I lived in. And it was a Greek revival structure, but they turned to me and they said, but Hetty, it's really a farmhouse, isn't it? <laughs> so I think, I think that's what's making it hard for us is that we're looking at a building that could have been quite, as Dan said, utilitarian, but it's, but it has some things around the front door and in terms of its, planning, plan, or, you know, inside that, that make it characteristic of Greek revival style, even if it's not a very high style. I don't, yeah, I don't know that the word distinctive is meant to mean distinctive in a high style sense, but distinct, like a distinct style. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think distinctive that's, that's, can be taken two different ways. Right. Yeah. It's but not like to, it has a distinction as something special. It's just different from others. Right, and, the, and the, the question is more about the group of people who would who would live in this house, right? It's not about the house itself, if we go back to the, the definition. Mm -hmm. um, so it's yeah, because of the environment of, of a group era of history. history. Right, right, mm -hmm. so if you lived in this time period, you would likely to live in a house that looked like this. Right. Whereas the next question gets more to the specifics of the actual house. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and so I go with, I don't think it's distinctive architectural style in the true sense of something that stood out at the time and people noticed and talked about and, you know, it, it anyway, I don't think it's distinctive and I'm using that word in that way. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I'm reading distinctive differently then because I think it is distinctive of the environment a group of people in that era would have lived in. Yeah, it might, the, the word might be better distinct. If, if it was worded distinct, that might be more um, suggestive of what they're going for in this particular. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they just leave it open to interpretation, which is right. difficult when we're try trying to right. decide what it means. Right. Well, when you, um, when you so look at it, yeah, okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> Straw vote, where do we stand on this one? Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a yes. Hetty? Yeah, I'm a yes on um, one and then probably... Well, we're just doing one. Just yeah, one. okay. Pat? Uh, I'm a no. Okay, I'm a yes. So let's mark that at the moment, tentatively yes. Uh, the next one for 111 embodies those char distinguishing characteristics of an architectural type. And no. I'm looking for Jan's input on this. Because when you have a plain building, how do you, when you have a plainer style of building, how do you define that? There was something in the um, record that talked about the front of it. Um, there, there, yeah. Oh, you can see that now, yeah. Right, which says um, nicely detailed doorway with engaged pilaster side lights. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Transom. Well, I mean, when you say plain, plain <laughs> can be a very clear style. Um, right, no, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I, I don't want to, I want to advocate for, under, well, I want to understand and I think advocate for not getting hung up in something having to be. Um, flourishing to be distinguishing, but what, but but at the same time, I'm curious what your input is on what the distinguishing characteristics would be of this particular architectural type. Well, I think it. I mean, it said even says something in there about 50 in the Amherst I mean, it's it's to me, it's a type a, a type of revival farmhouse style that is. Um, as it says, standard during that period. And right. I think it does represent that style. It does just, it, yep. is, it is representing a characteristic of the Greek revival style. I don't know. When so I'll leave it a yes there then. 
Hetty, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think um, I, I think it's a yes for me on that one too. And I, I think that's more of a yes than the than the one we just discussed prior to this. Okay. So we have um, pretty much concurrence on that. Uh, Four one one two. Please, can you go? Oh, there we go. <laughs> is the work of an architect, master builder, or craftsman, craftsperson, whose individual work has influenced the development of the town? As not far as we know. Right, not that we know of. Yeah, there was no particular name associated. Do right. I say no? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so 4113 contains elements of architectural design, detail, materials, or craftsmanship, which represents a significant innovation. No. 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 I don't think so. I mean, then if you had, like, when you're trying to make a distinction between um, plain and some sort of masterpiece, this is where it would happen. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Okay, so we have two yeses uh, in this category, and therefore we're basically saying it does have architectural importance. Right. Yeah. So let's move on to the final one, geographic importance. The structure meets the criteria of ge geographic importance if the site is part of or related to a square, park, or other distinctive area. No. Mm. Uh, I always have trouble with these. Uh. <laughs> I mean, think of that part of Pleasant Street, all those houses that Amherst College has so kindly restored and kept in place and made into a sort of town center of historic homes. But that's why I would vote yes on two, on one, 121, is that it's sort of... The architectural type. Yes, that it sort of reads as part of what Nate said of, of, of this kind of Co coherent streetscape um, with different architectural styles consistent with Western New England um, in the middle of the 19th century, you know, that that's... Right. Yeah. But it's and actually more, probably what I'm pointing towards is more the second one than this. Yeah, one. it's not yeah. part of a square or a park, even though it's... Is it? Is it? This is a stupid question. Is it? It's an Am, it's an Amherst College building, so it's it's now part of a campus, right? Well, they just got it though, right? You guys didn't own it before, did you? You did? Oh, okay. But the uh -huh. um, I, don't, I, don't, I had a map. Sorry, up. Uh, no, we we just we are just just getting ownership of it, but it, it, right. it's uh, you know it was someone. I associated. mean, how do you think of Pleasant North Pleasant? or whatever this is, South Pleasant, as a distinctive area, right? I don't think it's really campus necessarily. Right. right. Yeah, I don't find it to be a distinctive area. Yeah. Okay, let's say no on that one and move to the other because I think we might yep. find our answer there. So the second one is the structure as to its unique location or its physical characteristics represents an established and familiar visual feature of the neighborhood, village center, or the community as a whole. It's a feature of the neighborhood, yes. I would say yes for this. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a feature of the neighborhood, but it's not the shining star. No, but it's, <laughs> but it's a familiar visual feature and it, it fits in at this point with the neighborhood, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. okay. Okay, so everyone seems to agree with that. So we're basically saying that architectural importance and geographic importance stand and that this structure meets the criteria of significance or of a, as a significant structure. That said, um, that doesn't, that's not determining how we uh, vote on the request for demolition. That just establishes that fact. Um, Okay, and at this point, um, then we can discuss the uh, application itself. We have choices. We can either grant it outright, or we can put a delay. And if we put a delay, um, say what we hope to accomplish during that. Mm -hmm. 
or we can, um, I guess, ask further questions of the two people representing Amherst College at this point. Right, I think right now for the commission, so, you know, it has met three criteria and it's, you know, considered important or significant based on architecture and geographic um, importance. So the question, you know, would be is, does the demolition or removal of the structure, is that, you know, detrimental to those criteria and to the town? And, um, you know, I think what's difficult is the, um, although Amherst College mentioned that there's someone who's interested in moving it, Typically, we wouldn't um, allow for demolition with that it be moved, right? So typically, you'd say, um, you know, that if, if, if you think that's a possibility to actually impose a delay and then have Amherst College come back when it's more firmed up that, you know, that the house can be moved. It's, I think it's difficult to condition a demolition. I mean, yeah. you know, if the commission could make that motion that it can only be allowed to be demolished if it's moved to another location. And then, you know, if, if that's something you really feel strongly about, um, but usually that type of condition is not placed on a demolition. No, I think we just have to do a delay. I mean, we could also do a delay more generally that either that or some other solution is found. Right. Right. Um, or we could say, well, one thing members should remember, it's hard always to do this and I'm the worst offender, but you're not supposed to take into account the planning of what's going to replace it. That's not our purview, mm -hmm. uh, even though it often influences how we feel about, you know, what's gonna happen on that property uh, if the building is taken down. Um, so we, we talked about that a little bit with the barn slash garage, but um, in this case, it's even harder because we know that we might like this to stay, but you know we know what's going there. But really, in the end, we have to look at just the building on its own merits. Well, we have to look at the building on its own merits and remember that it's just a delay. We have no power to keep it there, but we're, all we're imposing is a delay. Exactly. And the delay says that we consider the building significant and that it shouldn't be demolished and we'd like to work with the college on finding a solution to what uh, a condition of lifting so if moving the building which is is considered a historic preservation success i think that that's the last level of success mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe maybe repurposing it is um uh if the moving it is considered demolition then a demolition delay would um mean that it couldn't be moved so we would probably want to put a condition in there that would so that we would lift the delay if if, if a resolution needed. right so that would what i would that's what i would be moving toward would be a motion that imposes a delay that could be lifted if it could be moved yeah i mean i think 13.51 if you can see it um says the commission is satisfied that there's no reasonable likelihood that either the owner or some other Per person or group will be willing to purchase, preserve, rehabilitate, or restore the building, and advises the building commissioner in writing. So we've used you know that provision before to have an applicant return during the delay to say you know here's here's the research I've done or here's what's possible or feasible. So um, I think that's what you know that's how we would use that in this um, application. Any other discussion or does someone want to make a motion or where do we stand? Pat and Hetty? I, th I think whatever we, I think we, we could argue for a delay with the idea that we are aware that there may be someone interested in the building and, and I suppose it's, is it usual in some kind of co communication that we would list what we voted on in terms of the, um, standards for designation that because they they kind of come they work together in my mind i'm i i don't know i'm i'm oh well if we vote for a delay yes we say we determined yeah. it was a significant structure and therefore the delay sorry sorry um jan is the delay 90 days oh, no, no it's a year yeah oh okay but the uh but it can be lifted Right, so it could be lifted, so we make it conditionally lifted for moving, but not lifted for complete demolition, or? No, 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 I don't think you could be that specific. I mean, okay. 
correct me if I'm wrong, Nate, but I think you say we oppose a delay and we lift it if uh, a resolution is found. So either it's moved or okay, whatever. Right. right. If if nothing, if if the move falls through and no one else comes forward and they really need to keep the get the project going, they can come back to us according to 13.51 and say we've exhausted all possibilities. We really need you to lift this because it's going to happen sooner or later. Right. And then we, we would meet up with them again on this. Right. right. But they're also coming back to, and correct me if I'm wrong, they're also coming back to say, can you lift the delay because we're moving it, which is considered demolition. Is that right? Am I understanding that correctly? Yes. Yeah. So part of this is that if, you know, whether or not they apply now or in the future, moving it is considered, is a considered demolition. Mm -hmm. So my thought is this is all part of the same, you know, this is part of the application. So it's part okay. of the alternatives to just, you know, a wrecking ball is, is moving it um, something the commission would see as, a, as you said, Robin, a win mm -hmm. if that becomes the solution to right. just, you know. Uh, We're just basically slowing the process down at this point. I'm sorry, Amherst College, if it happens, but that, that's kind of the only thing we have. Right. Is to slow it to see if we can find other answers. Right. Right. So I agree, and if Amherst College, after you know, if they if they research other contractors who move buildings, if this one doesn't work, and you know, after six months they say, "Wow, we really don't have a solution," they could come back to the commission and mm -hmm. present that information. So there's a second process where they come back to the commission, and then we have to vote to lift the delay. Correct. So mm -hmm. we can impose the delay. We have an idea that we would lift it if the house were moved and we might lift it if there were other conditions that made it clear that there was no point in keeping it imposed. Right. Yeah, we've done it before. Right. Yeah. So there's a path, there's a pathway to, and a timetable sounds like. Right. Great. So we just need to word it so that our, our thinking is understood. It, it's a delay but the understanding that they can come back with new information for us. Yeah, it's pretty standard. We yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm so, willing to make the motion if I can get the language. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. <laughs> I move to impose a delay, a demolition delay, and then can Nate fill in the rest for me? <laughs> Um, uh, you know, because they imposed delay uh, for the demolition of um, the single family home at 205 South Pleasant, you know, with the condition that the applicant can return to the commission to present alternatives. Yeah, at any time period. within the 12 month yeah. delay period. Okay. All right. I, I move thusly. <laughs> <laughs> I second. Uh, who seconded that? Pat. Pat. Pat okay. Is there any more, you know, is there any more discussion or? I'm good. Okay, um, we'll take a roll call vote. Mm -hmm. uh, Pat? Uh, yes. Robin? Yes. Hetty? Yes. Me? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, Mark and Tom, you guys do great stuff for the town. <laughs> But well, you probably expected this. I'm hoping you expected this. Okay. So we'll yeah we'll we'll get a letter out to um, Mark uh, to the college. You know in the you know the 12 months will start counting tomorrow, and then you know if if you have more information, you can, we can just work together to come back to the commission as needed. And so, um, you know, and then you know I think also commission the commission. I also like to say it's on incumbent a little bit on staff and the commission if you have any ideas send them to me and I can communicate with Amherst College too so if you have ideas for contractors or other things you can send them to me and we can try to come up with solutions and commission members are always willing to help do research or make contacts we're not always that successful but we have done it right. in the past for places we'll try help if you need it sure um, all right okay well thank you both thank you very thank much Thanks, Thank Mark. you. I'm, Thank I'm you. Gonna, I'm going to remove you as panelists, Mark and Tom, and then um, the commission can continue their meeting.
Okay, so um, public hearing is closed. The determination on that demolition request has been made and we now move to the first uh, agenda item of our regular public meeting. Um, anyone have any announcements? Anything, Nate? Um, I think you know, just while everyone's here, um, you know, Ben Breger is here with us. He's a new planner for the town. He'll be starting full time on June 1. And, um, you know, probably in the fall, he'll be taking over the role of the um, staffing the commission. And so I'll be, you know, winding down at some point, I hope in the next um, seven, eight, nine months. You hope. You hope. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yeah, cause I'm, I'm supposed to be taking, I'm supposed to be taking on some other boards and committees. So I have, I think I have four right now. Oh mm -hmm. oh. Got a full plate. Mm -hmm. And that, I think that's my only announcement. Um, okay. You know, um, if members terms, I think Jan, yours is expiring. I'm not sure who else, but if you're interested in serving, you can just send an email to me. Um, well, and I, I think yours I can report that I've been reappointed. Yeah. So yeah. And yeah. Been today. <laughs> Yay. Yay. I must have a hole in my head, but yes, I accepted. I mean, I looked at all the other openings. I thought, no, nothing's as nearly as interesting. <laughs> Historical commission, and at the same time, this email came in from Angela you know, asking me. Oh, great! Yeah, they were doing. I'm glad they did that. Yeah, they said they were going yeah. to, so that's great. And I yeah. got, heard from Angela yesterday, um, so I re upped. Oh, thanks, Good. Patty. Great. It still has to go through the board. Yeah, right. But I don't know. They asked us for little bios and things, so um, um, I don't know my status. This is something I should be doing. No, you're, I think you're automatically uh, still on for another year. Let me just, I'll look, um, I'll look quickly the, um, okay. I'll look quickly the, the uh, town manager's office was reaching out to members whose terms were ending in June. So if you hadn't received Why that, would Patty be ending? She's only just gotten on. I've only just come on. I think there was a mistake in Angela's email and I didn't want to be pedantic and because- or I think what happened is if you sometimes you um, a member is appointed to fill the remaining term of the previous member. So. Oh, I think that might be what it was. She uh, filled Ted's the red rest yes. of Ted's term. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah, this, uh, let's see. So it was just I'm here to do or die. <laughs> yeah, everyone else is up in uh, twenty one or twenty two. So um, Robin, you're you're with us for another two years. Yes. All right. For your sins, and Pat, another year. Uh, let's see, um, I think you may be on at the same time as Robin. Pat's, no. Pat and Robin are twenty-two. Okay, and, and Jane, Jane is, Jane gonna... is twenty-one. Both Janes are twenty-one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a stable group now. Yeah, that's nice. great. Yeah. Mm. We're practically family. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Okay, general updates. Uh, Civil War tablets, anything further on that? Yeah, An Anika emailed and um, she'd asked if, um, she's on a, another Zoom and I think she, she said this month got away from her a little bit, but she's still um, hoping to come back next month. And um, you know, after um, the meeting, um, I guess it was maybe a few meetings ago, Scott you know, wrote an article in the Gazette. And so I think, you know, she's still, I think they're, you know, I think it is a great project to see what can happen with the, the tablets. I don't have an update right now. I do think that is something, you know, I'm not sure there's a, um, I'm not sure where the discussions are with the library or where a home could be, but, you know, I think it's just something she wants to be a proponent of and we can wait till next month. But, right. Yeah. Well, what we said last time, we keep an eye on it. So. Yeah. 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 And I let her know that this, to me, this will just be an ongoing agenda item um, until okay. we can figure out something. Okay, B is Cummins to Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for outbuildings and um, something historical or just something district nominations. What's NHR? National Historic Register. So, you know, there's, there's each village. Um, you know, I mean, we could still send things. I think at one point we had looked at that a while ago and MHC, I think has, you know, kind of uh, preliminarily approved it and just asked if there are any more local comments. So okay. the one we've already put together. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't, you know, I think last time I said I'd send something to you and I didn't, um, if you want me to, I can do that again. I don't, you know, we looked at it a while ago and it didn't seem like there was any, any urgent comments, but I can. Yeah. I don't remember anything being 
necessary to change myself. I don't think anybody else does. Oh, I, I don't remember reacting that way. So I, I don't think you need to resend it, Nate, to me okay. anyway. No, I don't think so. I think it's all right. Fine. All right, I'll just let her know. And then for the outbuildings, you know, I think she, there wasn't enough money to essentially inventory all 120, but we had, I thought identified like a dozen that we wanted to be researched further. So essentially what she was providing the town was, um, you know, a database of structures that then could be used as a priority if there's other funding to do inventory. So I'll, I'll let her know that she can okay. just wrap that up. Great. Uh, Robin, demolition delay bylaw. Where All right. Going? I've been uh, trying to charge on this. Jane and uh, Jane Schiffler and I have just made some weekly meetings. Um, I pulled together so I spent some time pulling everything together from where Ted and I had left off. Um, I managed to get the um, Article 13 into an edible uh, word format and an edible ed one. Ed editable. Oh, okay. So I had it as, as a PDF. I didn't have Ted's files, so. <laughs> but edible might be good too. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'm gonna put edible in the minutes. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that, uh, so, and then I got all our comments from, from my notes and where we had stopped off. I had to retype everything into a form because of the transition between people. And then I, um, emailed Jane and we're going to meet weekly to move forward on that. And, um, to keep the momentum going, I decided on a weekly meeting between the two of us, um, I need to, Jane's, the other, Jane, Jane A isn't here. Um, um, I need to connect with Jane about uh, whether or not we're going to try for a demolition um, delay uh, to sponsor a workshop with the, the Historical Commission, but I'm going to do those things in parallel so that we're working on the delay. Yeah, but I would not uh, any time on the workshop if it takes away from getting these silly bylaws. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was really meant to be, before everything blew up, it was meant to be, um, um, to go hand in hand, that it might be helpful for us. But um, so uh, we should have two or th three or four weeks of work under our belts for our next meeting, and I will be delighted to report to you then. Great. And I wanted to ask Nate, when we get a, um, a working draft going, what is, what is okay for me to circulate to the commission? I can't do an editable or commentable Google Doc. Is that correct? Was it I think what you could send it to me and then I can send it out and ask for comments. And so okay. the idea would be then uh, commission members can send it back to me and we can share it at a meeting. So okay. Okay. You know, for instance, if, if Hetty had comments on a certain section, is it can't be shared between members, but I can share it and then we can discuss it at a um, at the meeting. Okay. All right. I just, yeah, it would be nice to have, I mean, the nice thing about having a shared Google Doc is that you can get all the comments in one place. Yeah, and I know that, yeah, so, but I think that it would be if you send me a link and um, my thought would be if the commission members sent me their comments, I could do the Google Doc. I just, you know, I, there's going to be, that's considered deliberation. So even. Right, yeah, right. Yep, yeah, right. You know, so even you for, could add them in for. Petty and four, right? And then we right. can then it'll all be in the one document. Okay, yes. so that'd be yeah. great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, um, and I think that, you know, even if, I'd be curious to see, even if you reached out to like Chris Kelly or someone at Mass Historic, it, you know, it would be through Zoom, but right, we were hoping that, you know, um, they were excited to come out to Western Mass because then they would hold a workshop on, you know, implementing a demolition delay bylaw and- Right, right. You know, and, you know, you know maybe they still are, um, now, but I'm not sure, you know, I'd be curious to know, you know, because I think they could give us some good, you know, tips if they were, if they came out, maybe. Yeah, right. And that was the idea. And so um, one of the hitches was that when I emailed Chris, um, he wanted to only communicate with the chair. And then, then it gets harder for me to take hold of if there's a delay, just because, you know, everybody's swamped. So I'll see if I can, if I can bypass that for, um, for efficiency's sake. Yeah. Just say the chair, say you've been nominated by the chair to do this. Yeah, and, and Chris was my, my instructor, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can work that to my advantage. You're chair of the ad hoc committee. Right. What, what is it called? It's not called a, what is it called? A task force? Task or? force, whatever. Yeah. Task force, is that right? Okay. Yeah. 
every time we do one of these, though, I wish those bylaws were updated. So I know, I know, I do too. And I was Awful. deep in them the other day. So yeah, yeah. Okay. And one thing too is you know the um, a lot of communities now are putting these in the general bylaws and not in the zoning. So right at the time, you know, when it was put in the zoning, I guess that was the typical place for it. And the way it's written it also relies on some of the zoning, but the problem is um, what we found out in the past a few times is that the commission's decision isn't, um, it can't be appealed. It becomes what's appealable is the issuance of a building permit. So, you know, the only way this can be appealed is to the zoning board of appeals, which is a funny process. So if it becomes in the, if it's put in the general bylaw, um, you know, it can be appealed either we can write an appeals process, whether that's through the courts or through another mediation, kind of like the local historic district. But so the, the, the zoning, commission can appeal if it's in the general. I mean, uh, or the applicant, we can write an appeals process that you know is just a little smoother because going to the zoning board isn't really. Some would argue that that's not the place to appeal a, a demolition review. Okay. Yeah. I think it's good to consider, but let's get them cleaned up first. Yeah, let's get it cleaned up first, yeah. Okay. CPA projects, writer's walk, Nate. <laughs> I put it on there, Jan, just so you can... Um... Fuck you. Yes, no, the... Um... So, you know, there was a little hiccup and Anthony went... Um... A little hiccup, he says. I like this term. A little hiccup. <laughs> Anthony went back out to bed, and so um, we should be getting... Um, if the results aren't in, they, we should be getting a contract going soon. So, um, you know, I think um, I think it, what happened was I think it just stalled long enough that documents weren't issued. So, you know, we had three or four fabricators that were waiting for responses from, and um, and I had a new website um, address that we could add to the sign. So, you know, something. You do have it. Well, I, IT said it could be as easy as like Amherst doco backslash writers walk signs or something so it's i guess it's the, then they ask like what does the commission want and so i guess the, i guess that's the question like is there is it as simple as that like do we like that sounds good to me i mean the simpler the better for the public right but it would be a separate domain for the signs which it should be well it would be under the town's website so the problem now is that umass <coughs> The link is to a site that's, um, I don't know if it's a UMass domain, but no, I think it's just the that guy. Yeah, he just, he, it's he, like, his domain he created, Amherst Historic. Right. And so if that domain ever went away or was rerouted, then we, you know, all the signs would be wrong. So if we, the idea would be that we would create this link, amherstma.gov backslash writers walk signs or something. And it would just be a redirect to that domain. So if that domain ever changed or something, we would just change it internally and no one would ever know. So all they would ever see would be that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I think writer's walk is fine. That's all it needs to say. Anybody think differently? No, I, I like the simplicity of it. And right. if even we could even, it, it occurred to me at some point that we could do a second walk of say, uh, young literature writers because there's so many in the area or, mm -hmm contemporary right. or whatever, they could all be under that same rubric, if yes. it's simple. Yeah, right, if it's not like saying historic or something, it's just- Right, right, right. yeah. Okay, no, that's good, so then, um, all right. So yeah, when right. are we installing them? <laughs> Very, this summer. <laughs> right. Actually, that is, the, that is the idea, is to, I was hoping by um, by July 1, but it'll be delayed, mm -hmm. but it is a, a project that is, the CPA money's there, and we're still hoping to get them installed this this season. I've heard that, like, how many times have I heard that? It doesn't matter. It's going to happen. Know, I know. But I'm really, I'm, this is it, you know, we're, if. It has to happen before you go off. So if you want to get yeah. off the historical commission. I agree. Okay. <laughs> we're not letting you off until this is done. All right. Okay. All right. You have I'm my talking word to on that. Paul tomorrow. I'm calling him and saying, look it. <laughs> okay. Uh, West Cemetery signs. Jane, I think I emailed yeah, out, we have that. out some tags for the names. And other than that, you know, I think it's it's probably on me to reach out to Kyle and Dave. You know, I'd asked a while ago for um, David Victor said, you know, the artist said he's going to have um, one or two signed templates or something, and he never he's never responded. So 
um, you know, essentially the town hasn't, you know, they wanted a permit issued or a sign off saying that they're done with their site plan review process because they, um, there's some issue maybe with their financing or I don't know, something And the town said, no, you have to finish the signs and another component of the review. So essentially, you know, we're not, the town's not gonna sign off until this is done. So right. um, let me write back to Kyle and, Kyle and um, David and see if they wanna come back soon. I mean, it's been a strange time, but I know Archipelago took a break. Some of their construction has been slow. So maybe um, I'll see if they've been working on this. As far as what Jane sent, um, I think we should always look to the shorter IDs. <laughs> Uh, the less information on a sign, the more likely it is people are willing to read it, use it. Yeah, I can actually pull that up. Let me see if I... Uh... Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. I, I could share my screen too, if you want. Um, I shared it. I, where, I lost it. Oh, so here's... Um... You got it. Okay. It's just up, yep. If you scroll way down, you'll see she has a second set that's the same thing, shorter. Yeah, so I mean, so you know, the idea is how, right, if this were on an interpretive sign in the West Cemetery. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Oh, wow. But so, keep going. Yeah, so then there's um, yeah. a little bit um, shorter. And the question is, um, you know, at one point we had suggested that the sign could have a web link or something, or, you know, we'd have, or, or just say like more information is available. I, I mean, even these abbreviated ones, it's still, still a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I, well, it may also be one of the things that could be placed on a card that's uh, available in the visitor center and that it just says, you know, very generally a des description of what's on the mural. And then if you want to actually ID, you can go over there and get a card and come back. I like that idea personally. Uh, sorry, what was that? Just a. You weren't listening to me. <laughs> you mean at the chamber? I was. <laughs> of commerce. You, you mean at the bid or chamber of commerce office, right? The visitor center. Yeah, that's, that's what the that visitor yeah. center is. That's what it says right. on the writer's walk signs, anyway. <laughs> I sure hope it's right. No, no, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and then you know, are we still? We'd still be doing a diagram type thing that says this is a trolley, this is a hotel, this is whatever. Just not all the people, right? Yeah, we're gonna have, um, you know, cause it's, it's both the people and then the depiction of amorous history. So the thought was to have um, call outs for the, you know, the, the, whether the setting or the landscapes that were just pick, depicted. And then the question was how do we list all the individuals? And so, you know, on an interpretive sign, we talked about at one point having, you know, like a triptych or having one big sign Right. In two locations, you know, a third in and a third at the other end, you know, so two of the same signs, but seeing Jane's list here, I, um, Is this a short descriptions? These are the short descriptions. You could make these much shorter. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm reading them and thinking the same thing, but, but Jan, I think at one point we had discussed, and you sent something to all of us, an example, I believe it was you, Mm -hmm. of, of often how they do paintings in museums where they will have the painting recreated with numbers. Right. Then a, then a, um, a reference mm -hmm. to the side so that you don't have all of this under the, you know, you, you look up, you, it's just who somebody is. You, you want to sign with all these names. I mean, I think probably for that kind of outline that I was yeah, talking about, right. like, that you, I think I sent you um, School of Athens by Raphael with that example right. of outlines. Right. Um, that could have something like Dickinson family out being set in front of Phoenix Hall, mm -hmm. looking east along Main Street or something like that. And then for the people, you could go get the card from the visitor center. Yeah, the um, uh, Dorothy Panas are hand raised, Jan, if I, I, you can let her speak. But I think the commission, we have to think about right how you know, at one point we said we'd like to have all the names identified when you're in the cemetery so you know, but it's a, it's a pretty big list. So then, you know, do you number key everyone and then have like a, you know, whether it's a second panel or something that then has these in some numeric order. Um, right. That's, that's kind of what I'm thinking, Nate. It just, I guess the practicality is, is that the visitor center isn't always open. And, and, you know, it, 
and I don't even know how many days a week it's open, but it's not always open. And so yeah. if, if we could number them and then have a, a panel with the key, then, and I think some of these could be shortened up. Definitely. Um, it, then then it, it, it would just be, be numbers. Um, and if people were interested in who that person is, they'll look at the key. But um, you can't have all of this uh, uh, beneath the photo and the sign. It just, it, visually, it wouldn't work very well, in my opinion. Right. Um, Jim, will let Dorothy speak. Sure. Hey, Dorothy, you're, you can unmute yourself, or I can do that, but you're allowed to speak. OK. Um, all the ideas that you're having are great, but there's something else that I've seen recently that I don't know the name of it. It's like a little splotchy square. And I've seen them on similar things like walk. QR code. QR code. Your smartphone up to it, and it gives you the longer text. Right. It's a QR code. I, we've talked about that for a number of things. We talked about it for the writer's walk. Um, I think the problem that came up was a not everybody has that an app to read those and b it may be a um, um, platform that's going to disappear. Ah, well, I just thought you could add it to the because um, I think the ideas you were talking about are very good and, and very accessible. But if somebody did have a smartphone, they could get the longer text, which I think a lot of people would like. But mm -hmm. I do agree, I do understand your problem with with a sign which has too much language on it. Yeah. Um, so I just thought it as an additional thing, not not instead of what you were discussing. Right. No, it's a good idea. Uh, we'd have to set up a site for the QR code to take you to, um, and people would have to have a one a reader, one app or another reader on their phone to read a QR code. Um, but I mean, they're they're very available. Um, right. Is it, is it possible for another organization to host um, something? I mean. Is it even possible for the town of Amherst in its drop down menu um, on the website to contain the information that is in this wonderful handout that I got from the visitor center, from the bureau, you know? Oh, well, I, used to print, I used to print out like a hundred of those every two weeks and put them in the it's, cemetery and they disappear, but. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, that's linked to our website, but it's, you know, it's buried within, you know, historic, you know, it's, it's a few layers into the web. Get into, yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm not sure like how, um, when you say like a drop down, I guess, how do we make it more accessible? Um, well, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's, it would be a question of getting through the layers. Is it, I mean, I just think, I just think it's so nice to have this. Yeah, the brochure um, is nice, yeah. It's a very, you know, on the other hand, I've got to a point in my life where I, trying to get rid of what in England is called bump. This is bump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good bump. <laughs> but it's, well, print, I mean, it's printed ephemera, you know, and there's tons of it. And I have tons of it. And nobody has to go to the business center and take one, but they could be there. Yeah, so I think that's the great. Web, like, the web location could be a specific address that bypasses all the layers and takes you straight to straight that. To it. That would be nice. And then the QR code could also take you straight to that. Right. right. And that could, you know, I mean, if that becomes defunct, it's a square, right? You could cover it over with something probably right. relatively easily. It wouldn't look too dated. Right. Yeah. 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 The, um, and, you know, what's, what we're hoping is um, whether or not Kyle and Archipelago agree is that, you know, they're supposed to be paying for this. So right. the commission is really advisory to them. And so um, it could be a really big sign. <laughs> Uh, information out there. Yeah. I mean, the size of another side of a building. Well, you know? Yeah, I mean, the idea was that there's two signs that the commission, um, that Archipelago discussed. One was like, you know, an entrance sign to West Cemetery, which we talked about having the west of the gate, you know, when you look, um, you know, when you walk by, by Zana down that, um, to that, you know, the Gaylord Gate to be on the left hand side, and then the sign for the mural. Um, and, um, and yeah. this is now a third sign if we were to put this text there as well. Yeah, it was interesting, this text, I mean, on the current West Cemetery signs, we say, you know, um, we have the, um, for the mural, we have um, the donors and some, some language about the process or the, you know, the 
kind of the history of the mural and I'm not sure if we would want to repeat all that too. I mean, that's like a, you know, it's like, would we have a visual sign and then a really text heavy sign? I, I don't, I don't know. Um, and I agree, we could probably create a specific web address and simplify the, a page. So right now the mural is, there's a web page for it, but then it's, some of it's on different websites. So, you know, like DPW has the division of trees and grounds and cemetery. So some information's there and some under, some is under historical commission, we could create um, a centralized. It's like the writer's walk where it's right. yep. you know, backslash mural, right. something like that and put it all in one place. Somebody <laughs> has to take the lead on this though, if it's gonna happen. I mean, they can say, sure, we'll pay for it. But now somebody has gotta be in charge of pulling it all together. You know, it's so great. I get to task Ben with helping on this. Thank you. Oh, nice. What a great first <laughs> thing to cut your teeth on, Ben. <laughs> Can I just make, I just want to make one comment about having- I'm ready to get to work. <laughs> having great. the brochure at the, uh, at the bid or the Chamber of Commerce is that it's, that, that's nice too, because if you're there, it directs you to the mural, right? So if you're at the mural, it might right. direct you to the bid. Right. The bid, it directs you to the mural. Um, I'm a big fan yeah. of keeping paper in the loop. Yeah, I think that the, we started putting the mural with the bid and chamber because, you know, we used to have a mailbox at West Cemetery. And like I said, we go through a hundred mural brochures right. a week, right. you know, every two weeks in the summer. And it just became somewhat cost prohibitive and time consumptive to keep refilling those. And it was always right. hard to say where they went, but right. they just, there we go. But I think, I think having them in those locations makes a lot more sense. And then it becomes much more broadly connected to everything else in Amherst. Right. Yeah, any, anything that they see that gets them into that center, they'll see the other stuff. So say right. they notice a house with a writer's walk sign and they go in there or the mural and they go in there, they'll see the, each of the other things too. So yeah. it's just good to interconnect. Okay, great. So Ben's going to take the lead on coordinating how all this fits together, <laughs> and we'll see how he does. Welcome okay. to the Historical Commission. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. But David, David is key because he's the one who's supposed to be developing the visual for the sign, correct? It is. Well, yeah, he's come up with some ideas, but if he doesn't hmm. want to. Yeah, so Ben, I'll, I'll um, I can loop you in with the artist and the you know Kyle from Archipelago, and I'll, just, I'll send an email. I have a note, send an email, um, and hopefully we can get that conversation started again. They came in December, maybe it was or November, with some preliminary ideas, preliminary ideas, and we had these lists of things that they were supposed to respond to, and then um, I followed back up at one point and never heard it, never heard back. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll keep it on the agenda for next time then so we can see progress reports. Sure. Yep. Okay. I'll go back to the agenda. I think. Um, okay, we're on public comment. Is there anybody left from the public? There's a, a few people left. Um, let's see. Sorry, I have a lot up on my computer right now. Are there any public comments? We can, uh, you can raise your hand if you'd like. I don't see anyone raising their hand. Okay. Uh, do we already have a meeting set or is there any pending business that we have to meet at a particular date? Actually, that's a, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. That was the last thing. There's um, two demolition permits that have, um, they're, they're almost complete. I think one just came in today. And so one's for a garage at 30 Fearing and one will be for, um, there's a, um, a back building at 300 North Pleasant. It's west of Kendrick Park. It's where there's the Amherst uh, Veterinary Clinic. And there, the owner is proposing to demolish that building. Okay. So, okay. so those two, that, that one, it'll probably be completed maybe tomorrow. Um, um, they submitted it, but it wasn't complete. So we haven't, you know, clocked it in. And I think 30 North Fearing is, I just, it came in, in the 30 North Fearing came in in like four different emails. So I just have to compile it all and send it off but they sent the final information today on that. So, so um, we need to meet before June 3rd. Well, with, you know, the nice thing is we have 30, we're supposed to have 35 days, but with the, um, with the COVID, we have kind of an unlimited, um, mm. we have a, you know, there's already flexibility, but um, it's a tough time because we need a two week, um, two week notice. And then the Gazette needs um, like five days for lead time. So, um, you know, that would put us at the end of June if people are 
available or maybe the first, you know, like the week of June 29th might work. Um, yep. Is that good? Are people planning to still be stuck at home doing Zoom meetings? The town will probably be doing Zoom meetings for a while, so I don't anticipate an in-person meeting in June. Okay. Uh, commission members? I mean, June 30th, for instance. Did you have a calendar? And we could do the week of we could do the week of June twenty second too. That would probably that'd be enough time to get a legal ad submitted. Yeah, I mean, if something else comes in next week, if we did the week of the 29th, you might be able to fit it in then too to avoid a second meeting right away. Right. right. I mean, we you know this is the period of that stuff coming in. I know it was a time of year. I haven't heard of anything um, anything else. Any preferences, members? This time of day on a Thursday is hard for me. I had to actually duck out of a standing five o'clock meeting that I have um, with other writers and I'm okay meeting, not meeting with them today, but I'd really like to not have to do it on a regular basis. So We used to meet Wednesdays. I mean, we could go back to Wednesday if it works for everyone. Yeah, I think this Thursday was... Um... You know, we we had done this just because of the uh, the, dem the this this demolition application, but not you know I agree if you know if commission members want to meet on a Wednesday at five or four or seven you know that works for me so it's really up up to commissioners. So would we be looking Wednesday at Wednesday for me. the Wednesday the twenty fourth of June or Wednesday the first of July? First of July. Yeah. That's um. Any references? Should we say just the 24th of June? And I, I tentatively have a, a board meeting Zoom at 3.30 that would last about an hour on the 24th, but I could do it after that. You don't want to wait till July in case you get another one in the next few days that you could put in and still fit under the wire timing? Wire? Yeah, my only concern is that it's getting close to the 4th of July weekend, but... Oh, oh yeah, yeah. People might be doing stuff. Well, we could always use that as a backup if something happens. Right. Um, would five or six work for you, Pat? If to give sure. you a break? Five, five or five o'clock would work. I, I don't need a break. Anybody like that what time? Not like that time? Five is good. So June 24 at 5 p.m. Yep. Yeah. And the, it'll be similar to tonight or this evening. It'll be a demolition hearing followed maybe by a public meeting if there's enough time. But we have two hearings, correct? We correct. will have hearings. Correct. Yeah, I mean, I think the, um, you know, the garage at 30 North hearing is an older garage. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how visible it is. The 300 North Pleasant, you know, seems like it was, um, you know, it's, all, it's, it's an older outbuilding that's been converted over time for to different uses, so. Um, you know, the owner's proposing okay. to have something in its place, but I think that could be a discussion. Um, well, we can check with the two Janes as well. If it's a problem for them, we may have to email back and forth about this, but sure. tentatively let's set that time. Yep, that sounds good. And then okay. Jane Walsh should be back to do a decent job of running a meeting. Oh, you did a great yeah, job. Yeah, thank you, you did a great job. <laughs> Excellent. I was like this. Yikes. <laughs> um, I think Jane also, you know, she, she would recuse herself because of the, um, for the hearing and maybe she just, I was wondering if she forgot to tell us she was going to or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jane. Um, okay. We emailed, we emailed just yesterday, so something must have come up because. Yeah, I emailed her about something else this morning. I mean, I haven't heard it heard back, but I said I'll yeah, see. You know, I before. emailed the last few days, so I, I, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Okay. Ben, are you okay with everything? Yep, all good. Okay, <laughs> great. Well, I guess we'll see you and Nate next month. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. everybody. All right. We'll thank you. Vote. Take you um, all. Bye, Ben. Hey, Nate. Bye, all. Stay well. Yep. Could I ask you a question, Nate? Sure. Um, not related to historical commission. <laughs>